All right, so uh, yeah, I just got this out uh, the brush blender here for my weed whacker, and uh, that just shreds up this goldenrod. So yeah, you know, we we're trying to transition this field. It was just a cornfield, and uh, there's a lot of clover and goldenrod, and just trying to encourage some things like the clover and get rid of the goldenrod. Um, but yeah, so these swales are laid out on contour. I had a friend come out with a laser level. I don't know if you can kind of see um, how it goes, but I'll walk along a little bit. Uh, there's a little quince tree in the back there. Here's a, some comfrey that I stuck in here. And ideally, I would love to see the comfrey just kind of, um, I'm gonna continue to split this and propagate it and plant that in between all the, um, you know, all the edible varieties that I've planted out here. And it's a great mulch. It's a dynamic accumulator, which means it acts as a nutrient pump. It has a really deep tap root that goes uh, way down into the subsoil and draws nutrients from deep below the earth brings them up to the leaves and then when you chop it and use it as mulch um, you're basically returning those nutrients to the surface uh, as, it, as they uh, compost and break down the plants up above there will use what they need and then it'll just continue and you basically are creating the cycle and this is a cultivar called uh, it's Russian comfrey uh, Bocking 14 which um, it's a sterile seed so it will not spread by seed and this stuff can take over, so I like this, and it's very easy to split by root. You just stick a shovel in the ground, take a chunk out, and plant it, so plant it somewhere else. Um, so all along, so I don't know if you can, if you can see, it is mounted up all along the top here. There's a honeyberry there, another honeyberry, and in the back you'll see a hazelnut there. Uh, there's another quince tree, um, hazelnut, Siberian pea shrub back there for nitrogen fixation. And so, you know, the things that will only get, the honey bears will get about five feet tall. So they're kind of here in this front, this front um, layer. Um, and then the hazelnuts will be shrubs that could be like up to 12 feet tall. And the trees back there, there's an apple tree, will get up to 20 feet tall or so. So you're creating this multi-story, uh, three-dimensional landscape for uh, collecting solar energy, basically. And uh, it's much more effective than just a monocrop. And I think it's really pleasing to look at too. I mean, one of the, I think that's a benefit that's often overlooked is just the uh, kind of the emotional experience you have in a place. So yeah, just kind of touring along this swale here, you know, all honeyberries here. We tried planting strawberries in between them, but they just got totally overgrown. And I mean, I'll show you this swale, the next swale uh, um, further north and you'll see what I'm dealing with here why I needed that brush blender. Um, but yeah, we just keep going on and on and on. It's awesome that it follows the contour of the land. It gives it that ni nice curve, organic look, um, rather than just these straight lines. You know, nature just doesn't work like that. And here at Tapaloo Gills, it's always striving to mimic nature, really. Um, so now I'm up and over the swale here, and uh, you can see this is my next swale. That I'm about to get after. So if you follow it that way, you can see it on contour. And there are plants in here. Um, so yeah, here we go. We'll get a dig in there. There is a sea berry, also known as sea buckthorn, which produces uh, these berries that are very like citrusy, uh, really high in uh, omega profiles, threes and sixes, I think. And um, Man, when mixed with like a honey and uh, apple cider vinegar to make this oximal, oh my gosh, just this amazing, uh, it's like sunshine in a bottle and it's uh, just so, so good for you. Better than, I think it tastes way better than orange juice, but it's uh, got a similar taste. So yeah, so they're in here. So I'm going to come through here next with my, my pruning saw and, and then here's a ha another hazelnut. Um, and this to me is like one of the beauty of perennials is that, you know, I've done some maintenance here to, to make sure they survive and you know last year I chopped all this stuff down also but now they're getting to a point where they're hardy enough where even with all this kind of canopy of goldenrod and clover shading them um, they're in there surviving and growing and I'm going to come through and clean it out a little bit more to let them get some sun but um, I mean to me one of the best parts of a perennial ecosystem is that the vigor and health uh, will just continue to increase over time um, and you're not dealing with this, uh, oh, just annuals are so tender. I mean, they're, they're resilient also, but, um, there's a lot of, a lot of tenderness there and they need a lot more attention. 
and these guys could be left alone to their own devices for a little while, these guys and gals. And uh, I can see another hazelnut in there. Um, they're gonna be around. There's a June berry, also a service berry. So, yeah, gonna work on cleaning up this swale now, and uh, thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time.